Well, hello everyone. It's Father's Day weekend, June 17th, 2018. And uh, I shot some B-roll here, uh, more or less as background, so that I uh, can have something visual while I answer the story problems that I put on last week's video. So, <clears throat> recall that I asked four questions, and uh, they were kind of targeted at different uh, age demographics. So, the uh, uh, one question in particular was... Uh, targeted to the youngest of the younger demographic and one question in particular was targeted at the oldest of the older demographic. So let's uh, take these questions in turn. So the first question was if I'm committed to only taking seven trips total to haul 111 bales, what's the minimum number of bales that I need to have on each load? So if we if we can do a little bit of multiplication and and understand uh, uh, fairly quickly that if we put 16 bales on each load, then in seven trips we could haul 112 bales. So uh, given that I needed to haul 111, I would need to have 16 bales on each load except for one. So six loads could have 16 bales. The seventh load would need to have only 15 bales, and thereby in seven trips, I would be able to haul all 111 bales. All right, so what I'm doing here is uh, checking the pastures and putting uh, minerals in the min mineral in the mineral boxes, and so uh, that's the uh, actual task being done here in this uh, background video. So the second question has to do with um, speed and distance and time. So the question specifically gave this information. In the Big K, I'm traveling about five miles per hour. And the distance between the location uh, from where I was stacking the bales and the location where I was loading the bales was about a half a mile. So the key facts were I'm traveling a distance of one half mile and I'm traveling that distance at a speed of five miles per hour. And so the question was how long in minutes will it take me to travel that distance of one half mile? So we can begin with the understanding that uh, if I travel five miles an hour uh, that's ten times as far as the distance between the two locations. So. I am traveling a distance of a half a mile. That's uh, just 10% of the distance of five miles. So 10% uh, uh, in time. So in other words, if I can travel five miles in one hour, in 10% of one hour, I can travel a half mile. So the answer to the question would be 10% of one hour or six minutes. So in six minutes at a speed of five miles per hour, I can travel the distance of one half mile. Okay, story problem number three. This is for the youngest of the uh, younger kids listening to the uh, video. So the question was, I have six tractors on this ranch. If two of them burned up, how many tractors would be left? Well, of course, if I had six tractors and two burned, I would still have six tractors, uh, four that still worked and two that were burned up. But that's not really the spirit of the question. Spirit of the question was, I have six tractors, I take away two tractors, and I have four tractors left. So the answer is four tractors. Okay, so the final question was a hard one, and this question uh, was based on this premise. I have a rope a thousand feet long, and I want to put that rope into the shape that maximizes the amount of area contained inside of the rope. So I gave you four possible configurations. One was a, one was a triangle, one was a rectangle other than a square, the third choice was a square, and the fourth choice 
is a circle. So the uh, two shapes that hold the least area are a triangle and a rectangle other than a square. So the square will always dominate uh, either of those two options. But the reality is the shape that will hold the most area for a given perimeter, in other words, for 1,000 feet of rope, uh, is the circle. And the intuition, I, I can prove this with calculus, but that's not so easy to do in a video. Uh, but what is easier to do is just to convey the intuition. So a, uh, per, a, a shape will maximize the area contained uh, within when all sides are pushed as far away from all other sides. And so for a, a rectangular shape, that's why a square uh, beats any other dimension of a rectangle, and that's why it beats a triangle. Uh, but the circle is the perfect shape uh, uh, to put that 1,000 foot rope into because it, it, it maximizes the distance that each side is pushed away from every other side. And for that reason, the circle will always dominate the square. And the square will always step dominate any other rectangle and will always dominate any triangle. So uh, that's, uh, that's the answer. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, had a beautiful day here on Father's Day. I'm uh, hoping for rain and got a little bit. Uh, we're hoping, of course, that we'll get some more rain over the coming days. Best wishes to you all.